SK Tone TV here guys and we're here with you with another breakdown, recap show, post fight show, whatever the fuck you want to call it, of the boxing last night featuring Clarissa Shields and Nikki Adler for the ladies super middleweight title. Just going to give you a little recap of the bout and what happened and how it went down. Now it started really really fast, um, Shields just bringing the pressure bringing the pace, looking really, 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 really focused and ready for the task at hand. I mean, Nikki, Nikki Adler was a little bit, she looked shook, if I'm going to be honest. As soon as the fight started, she looked shook. She looked like she was sort of, uh, I don't want to say out of her depth, because it's sort of disrespectful, but at the same time, she did look out of her depth. Uh, she was just bringing the pace, bringing the pain, man, bringing that Flint, Michigan heat. Bring those straight punches, those lovely straight punches. Um, when we work on boxing, and I've trained with people um, around Scotland in different gyms, like Lock End ABC in Edinburgh, um, where Terry McCormack teaches, um, and then you've got Bradley Welsh's gym as well. Um, they all say the same things. If you, s if you have the range and you've got the length in your arms, use that range and utilize those straight punches. You don't really need to be messing around with throwing um, a wild loopy stuff. You got long arms. Let's let's use let's use that reach. Let's use that distance. Let's fucking let's let's pound some straight punches out, jabs and crosses. Let's mix it up. And that's exactly what Clarissa was doing against Adler. And she was she was looking nice. She was looking sharp. First second round she started strong. Third round it, it looked pretty much the same. Constant pressure. You know, uh, Nikki Adler was literally just trying to defend herself. Now here and there trying to look for a little pot shot to get back uh, uh, but see to be honest uh, Clarissa never even gave her a chance to get settled in this fight at all she was there all guns blazing um, nice balance obviously with that two time Olympic gold uh, medal experience that Clarissa Shields has got and her world championship experience in amateur level and her US national experience it all sort of co like came together for her and uh, it just looked like she she was rightfully in the right place at the right time and she deserves she deserves all the respect she's getting right now because honestly she really proved it last night and she had cyborg santos from mma uh, walking her out to the ring which was awesome they both sparred recently uh, it just uh, and the, the fourth round was pretty much the same thing man it was clarissa shields um closing adler down closing the space, cutting the ring off, just landing beautiful crosses, hooks, just timing her shots to perfection. Uh, like Literally until it looked like Adler had no way of coming back. And in my opinion, in the fourth round, a brilliant stoppage for the referee, really intelligent stoppage because Adler did not look like she actually could do anything. Shields is an absolute machine. And in my opinion, she's going to be an absolute beast for the women's boxing. She's going she's gonna to be a beast just like Anne Wolfe. Uh, mark my word right now she is an animal she wants to be in there she's desperate she has a need to fight she has a need to be an inspiration to the kids in flint michigan she's not fucking around at all and she comes and she can pack a fucking punch she means serious business absolute serious business now that was the ladies world championship bout from last night um now i just want to talk a little bit about Herrera versus uh, Soto Caras last night, um, which was a great back and forth um, battle. Um, if I'm gonna be honest, though, in my in my humble opinion, I thought Soto Caras done more. I thought, I mean, he was coming into this fight. He's not got the best record in the world. He's 28 wins, 11 losses, four draws. He's only got 10 KOs. Uh, he's not exactly, you know, I mean, the scariest welterweight fighter. He's 35 years of age, ten, uh, five foot ten. Um, he's from North Cal uh, North Hollywood. Uh, you know, he's fought six world champions before. Um, so yeah, this guy, this guy, this guy comes to bring it. He's fought people like Berto. You know, he's fought, he's fought some big names, some experienced fighters. And Herrera obviously is well known for being robbed against uh against danny garcia which was a pretty fucked up fight herrera 37 years old five foot seven a couple of inches shorter 
um, than Soto Caras. He's 23 wins, 7 losses. Um, but he's a guy that gets robbed quite a lot, um, especially against Danny Garcia. He got absolutely robbed. Uh, 12 rounds, he, he he beat Danny pretty easily in that fight. Uh, many people would agree with me. If you don't agree with me, you probably know fuck all about boxing. But that's okay. It's alright to be an armchair fan. Um, uh, Herrera comes from Riverside, California. Um, former WBA interim junior welterweight champ. He turned pro at 27 years old, so this guy, this guy started later on a little bit, but he looked good. He looked real good. Um, now the start, like, pretty much all through this fight, it was quite even. Both of the punch stats were pretty much identical. Um, Herrera was slightly ahead, but I mean, Soto Caras was really bringing the pen all the way through. He was pushing the pace. He looked like the guy who was more wanting to actually win this thing. Um, Herrera was trying to just box him and move around, which is good. Um, but if you ain't Floyd and you can't do it like Floyd, and I would literally avoid every single shot. Then sometimes if you're only just on the back foot and constantly moving your head and trying to slip and slide, and you're getting caught with shots, it doesn't look good. It's not a good look, especially if you're not coming back with strikes. And I feel Herrera was sort of doing that in this bout. I just think, um, I just think Soto Caras was doing a little bit more. I mean. First round started off, they were both really just feeling each other out in the first round. Um, Herrera landed some nice jabs. Uh, Soto Caras was just stepping forward the whole time, trying to trying to close the distance down. Soto Caras is a good boxer too, I mean, when he wants to, but he likes to bring the pain a little bit more. Um, so basically all the way through the fight, it was pretty even. Both guys had their moments in different parts of the fight. It was really they were both really busy. Soto Caras was just pressuring the whole time, moving forward, landing shots here and there. Um, Herrera literally just landed a little bit more than Soto Caras, and I think that's what the judges went with that. I think, I think they go too much with the exact count of punches landed and what's not landed, because I think sometimes the guy was slightly more aggressive, uh, and he's pushing the pace. And he's sort of dictating uh, and closing closing the space down, sort of like what Glovkin does to many people. I think Soto Karas kind of fought this fight like that. And he was landing nice jabs, nice crosses, ni lovely combos, you know, when he had the opportunity to do, to do so. Um, I just think sometimes in boxing, they'll give it, they'll give it to the guy who's... I mean, just because he's landed more, I don't mean he's landed more meaningful shots. Because a lot of... Herrera shots are just little taps to the arms and little taps here and there. You can make the argument Floyd does the same thing, but no, because Floyd adds in so many pull counter crosses and where he lands flush. Um, even though he can't knock you out, but he lands flush right in your jaw every time. If he's going to hit in the stomach, it's flush. He hits in the stomach to open your face up and goes flush to the head. So it's, it's, it's different. People criticize Floyd a little bit too much. Um... There's other guys that you can criticize though, like like if you want to come from that strain, you know what I mean? You can you can uh, you could uh, criticize Herrera in this fight because he was mostly on the back foot, in my opinion, and the the shots he would land were just little shots here and there, a l constant li little pity patty jabs. Soto Caras was pushing the pace, landing bigger shots. Um, sometimes they're not they're not landing, but at the same time the intent is there. Like, uh, for example, in the fourth round, lovely, lovely short hook. Soto Caras landed on Herrera as he was stepping into the distance. Beautiful, just stuff like that. Lovely, moving his head to the side when Herrera saw an uppercut coming back straight away to the body and to the head with two hooks. Uh, just nice stuff like that all the way through. And to me, that's a little bit more eye-catching sometimes, you know? Unless you really got it down like Floyd, you know what I mean? It's For me, it's difficult to give it to that guy who's constantly moving back the way Herrera was doing you know because if you're not actually coming back with constant pull counters and constant counter attacks and, and a lot of your own offense the way Floyd does um, then you know like you can make arguments for the other guy who's more aggressive to win for example when Floyd fought Maidana if Floyd wasn't constantly countering him and constantly jabbing him to the stomach jabbing him to the arms literally get, realizing his distance to time uh, bigger power shots all the way through the judges would give it to Maidana because he's constantly pressuring forward the whole time. So they would give it to him. They would give it to a guy like that. You know? So, 
So people talk a lot of shit about Floyd, but he's constantly busy all 12 rounds. He doesn't even take a second off, alright? He's literally on the ball all the way through and he's super focused. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to stop talking about Floyd because Floyd wasn't fighting in this fight. He's going to be fighting f- soon though. But yeah, this fight, uh, Soto Caras and uh, Mauricio Herrera, great, 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 great fight. I thought it was an excellent bout. It was, it was back and forth. Soto Caras had Herrera on the ropes a lot as well in the fourth round, which is nice. Um, it pretty much continued on like that all the way through. Both guys getting their opportunities, taking advantage of their opportunities, missing some opportunities. But in, in my opinion, I just think I think Soto Caras was doing more um, all the way through. And then when we get into the second half of the fight, um, uh, mainly in the eighth round, you see... Herrera sort of picking up a little bit more and he's just landing more shots um, in the closing stages of the fight. Uh, but to me, it was pretty much even all the way through. Uh, and like, Soto Karras had a little bit of time off. I think that done him well because he looked nice and fresh in this fight. He was ready to go um, and he was fighting hard all the way to the end. This this is what really impressed me. It was the later, li- really later rounds that Soto Karras was bringing the pen. Um, he was really, really fucking just chasing Herrera, man, and causing him down, landing good shots. Herrera, a lot of heart, a lot of ability. I'm not taking anything away from Herrera either. I'm 100% respect for both guys. But in my opinion, I just feel that Soto Caras really deserved to take this fight. Um, then we move on to the... What round was this? It was the tenth round, the final round of the fight. It's in my opinion, like just sort of Karas just brought it the whole fucking the whole time, eh? Um, again, Herrera's on the back foot. It's sort of Karas just whipping them hooks and just whip, whip, whipping it in, man. Body, body, jabs, using his reach excellently, then timing crosses. I, I love how sort of Karas. See, as soon as he managed to close the distance on you in the ropes, he'll use his reach, his jabs, but the second your backs to the rope. He'll fucking go to the body. Bat, bat, bat. Just land beautiful, beautiful left and right hooks to the body. Lovely, man. It's just, it's just really, really, I can appreciate, you know, um, the timing of landing those shots. Because in reality, when you're actually in the ring against somebody, it's fucking hard to actually land those shots that you really want to land. When you're going to the body and stuff like that, when you want to land a nice hook to the body, it's so hard to actually land it flush and land it clean. This guy is, he was doing really, really well last night. And I just think in the right at the end of the fight here, he wanted it a lot more than Herrera wanted it. Um, and it just, just in my opinion, I just thought he, he done a little bit more. But Herrera ended up getting the decision in this fight. Um, which is still, in my opinion, I'm not going to, I can't, I can't say too much against it. Because the punch stats, at the end of the day, like I was saying, Herrera landed more shots. Um, his total punches are twenty five percent. Um, Soto Caras is twenty three percent. Herrera landed. Uh, he threw seven hundred and fifty six. Soto Caras threw uh, eight hundred and ten punches. Herrera landed one hundred and eighty nine out of seven hundred and fifty six, and Soto Caras landed one hundred and eighty three out of eight hundred and ten punches. So he threw a little bit more and landed just a little bit less, but. Like, I still, like, I so even, you know what I mean? It's so even. It's crazy. Um, Like I was saying, those little pity patty shots here and there that Herrera was throwing, it just it built up to two, uh, 2% more at the end. Um, Herrera, uh, like, like I said, Soto Caras' jabs were beautiful. He landed 21%, uh, 16% for Herrera. Um, the ex- Herrera actually threw 442 jabs. Um... Soto Caras threw 239 jabs. The battle of the jabs was firmly won by Jesus Soto Caras. Um, so he landed 49 in total. Um, um, Herrera landed 68. It's saying he landed 68 here, but there must have been... It says he landed more jabs, but his percentage of jabs is less. Okay, that doesn't really make much sense, but still, we're going to roll with it. Punch up power punches sorry um so herrera landed some more power punches 
Soto, Soto Kara threw a lot more power punches. He was really going for it to the body, but a lot of those body shots were landing on the arms, and the crosses were beautiful. Those were landing well, but um, not as many were landing. Herrera just had a little bit better balance and a little bit better. He was poised in his positions. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so the power punches in total, um, Soto Caras landed more, 134, and Herrera landed 121 punches. Um, so yeah, it was, it's a close fight. I mean, whatever way you see it, it's close. In my opinion, I would have gave it to Soto Caras, um, but I'm not. I'm not angry that Mauricio Herrera got it because at the end of the day, he's been robbed dirty before by people like Danny Garcia. Um, People in the comments of different videos are saying it's bullshit. Karas won that fight. More proof that boxing is bullshit. Um, it's it's just what can you say? Boxing is has got a problem. Box boxing boxing is one of those sort of sports where you do get these problems, man, and it's right in front of our eyes all the time. Unless you knock somebody clean out, then the judges quite a lot of the time are gonna fuck your shit up. And they're going to do some dumb shit. Because 99% of these judges have never thrown a punch, taken a punch, felt like what it feels like to be in a fucking ring, even at amateur level. So they don't really give a fuck either. They're like, oh, who's the bigger name or whatever, or... Pff, I don't know. I don't know how they think. Do you know what I mean? But a lot of boxing officials and judges, uh, they don't know shit. So, uh, But I'm not going to be disrespectful towards... Uh, Mauricio Herrera though because he's a warrior he came to fight he done his job and uh, Jesus Soto Caras really impressed with his performance he had a, a little bit of a layoff and it done him really well he came back and he was looking real fresh um, so yeah real sick real good um, just wanna just wanna finish up right there for this for the breakdown of the fights last night I will be back with you real soon. I'm going to have a, real, a little video of uh, Vasil Lomachenko, his fight tonight. just want to talk a little bit about his past couple of bouts. Um, when he lost to Salido. Um, and, uh, you know, just, just uh, a couple of other of his, uh, of his bouts. He's not had that many, obviously. But he's got some, he's got some, great, some great performances there that I just want to dissect a little bit. Um, and talk about his movement and talk about the combinations he lands. Um, he does really, really well in the southpaw stance. Yeah, he's actually going to fight uh, Mariaga tonight, um, but I'm going to come back with a little breakdown in a little while, give you a little tale of the tape. That's all for now. For me, it's SK Twins TV, Boxing Edition. Peace for now.